surprise. Okay, so this happened like two months ago, but I wanted to make a video about it because it's just so ridiculous and I just needed to share this with the world. So not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that I had a stalker from YouTube. So here's the story. About two months ago, I get a friend request from this random guy, James. I honestly don't even remember his, la his full name anymore. James. And I was like, why are you friend requesting me? Like, you know, like you always get those random friend requests from people that you don't know and you just like, you know, don't accept them. But I like looked and from what I could see from his profile, I was like, well, let me look at this guy. And I was like, wow, he's actually like really cute. And I, like, messaged him, which is totally unlike me. I was like, hey, like, you're really cute, but, like, who the fuck are you? And he's like, haha, I was just going to message you. And so here's how it played out. He told me that he found me on Facebook through suggested friends. He lived in Florida. He was, like, 34 or some shit. I'm 27, so that's not, like, that big of a deal. Um, but he was really attractive. And he lived in Florida, and, oh, I just remembered his last name, but I'm not going to say it. Um, and he said that he found me through suggested friends, even though we didn't have any mutual friends in common at all. So, like, red flag number one, you can't just, like, find someone that you don't know that fucking lives in New York and you're in bumfuck Florida, and then you just, like, find this person, you know? And so, like, you know, that's, like, a weird situation, but for some reason we ended up talking, like, for five fucking hours until, like, three o'clock in the morning, because, like, I'm stupid, and I trust people too easily, and, like, any social interaction I'm, like, down for, you know? Like, I, I love getting to know people and all that stuff, so we ended up talking, and, like, did he he didn't know I was trans I like came out to him I was like yo like I'm gender fluid like this is what the deal is and he's like well you know I still think like you're hot like in all of your presentations like as male and female and I was like well that's nice and so like I got a lot of validation from this guy but like a couple things just really didn't add up like he only had like a couple pictures on his profile picture on his profile barely made any posts his friends list wasn't visible, so you, like, couldn't see if he had any friends or who his friends were. And, like, it was really annoying because he would be really validating towards my gender, but it was validating towards, like... No, it was validating towards both sides, I guess. But he would always, like, say... Like, we talked for, like, literally five days. Um, he would, like, make comments about, like, you know, kind of, like, sexual comments and... I'd just be like, yeah, whatever. But then, like, they just kept coming in, and, like, I literally, like, texted him. I was like, listen, like, I'm glad you're attracted to me, but, like, my mind means more to me than you complimenting me on my physical body. Because he was like, I, you know, oh, he kept talking about how he wanted to, like, fly me down to Florida and how, like, he wanted to see me in, like, a swimming suit, a one-piece, mind you. And I was like, I've had top surgery, so, like, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was like, yeah, I, I want to fly you down to Florida and like mention it a bunch of times. And I was like, well, dude, I don't have any money. And he's like, well, I do. And I was like, okay, whatever. Um, but you know, I'm stupid and I just like kind of, but there was a lot of red flags, right? And so like we continued talking and like slowly he started to kind of like drift away. And like, I, I talked to a bunch of people about this. I was like, listen, is this sketchy? Like, is this weird that like he found me and that like, we don't have any mutual friends and like he's really interested in me and all this shit and like he just came off like kind of desperate I guess and just very like eager and like I'm the same way like I could literally like fall in love with someone after like one conversation with them and become like obsessed with them but I think that's just because I have borderline and that's how my mind is kind of wired is to form quick attachments to people um but all my friends were like, that's fucking sketchy. Like, you need to stop talking to him. Like, this is weird. He's clearly stalking you. So I'm thinking, like, maybe it's one of my YouTube followers that, like, you know, like, Googled me or, or found me on Facebook or something. Um, you know, because I've mentioned, like, my full name on here. And, to, you know, 
not trying to add more friends and have people, like, add me, but Rylan is not, there's, like, two Rylans on Facebook total. So, like, if you were to type in my name, like, you're gonna find me. So, it was just really weird, and, like, I noticed that he, like, kind of stopped talking to me, and, like, I have attachment issues, and, like, I was like, yo, bitch, like, this was on, like, a Sunday. I kept saying, like, can we talk, can we talk, like, you know, what's going on? Like, I really want to assess, like, did you actually find me online? And he was like, you know, actually, like, I didn't find you under suggested friends. I was looking through other people's pages and I must have come across you. He's like, which isn't like strange because I have a lot of gay friends and a lot of trans friends. Like, that's fine. But you have trans friends in Florida. I don't know any trans people in Florida. I've never been to Florida. I know one person in Florida and they don't even live there anymore. So the whole thing was just really weird, and, like, he ended up just not really talking to me anymore, and I confronted him about it, and I was like, what the fuck happened? Here you are talking about, like, flying me down to Florida and how you want to see me in a swimming suit and, like, do all this shit to me, and he was like, yeah, I guess I just realized that, like, I'm more chill than you, which is, like, so offensive, because I was very open and honest with him over the duration of our talking, just as I am on YouTube, about my mental illness and how that affects me. And there was one night when we were talking, because the first night we were talking, it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for, like, five hours. But then, like, as the days went on, it would be, like, we would text, and then he would respond three minutes later. And personally, to me, I'm not going to say all borderline people are like this, but I know other borderline people can relate to this. Me, personally, taking three minutes to respond when we used to go back and forth is, like, you hate me, you're abandoning me. And you don't want to talk to me anymore. That's how I interpret that. That, like, you're too busy to talk to me. So, you know, I just... It was weird. And so, like, our last conversation, I was just... He was like, I'm more mellow than you. And that was just really offensive because that was clearly saying, like, to me, your mental illness is too much for me to handle. You're too high-strung. You're too anxious. You're too clingy. And he's just like, I don't think it would be a good fit. And I was like... You were saying all this shit, motherfucker, and now all of a sudden you're not interested in me. So I like, I was like, that's fine. Like, whatever, bro. But I gave him, I was like, I'm giving you one more chance to just tell me, how did you actually find me? I was like, did you find me through YouTube? Like, how did you find me? And he's like, I honestly don't remember. I don't know. I just think that's really weird. And I, and I questioned him. I was like, do you normally just like friend random people that you don't fucking know that live in different states? He's like, I've only done it a couple times. So that's like a red flag right there. Like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Like, I don't care how attractive someone is. You don't just like add them as a friend. And, and you know, it, the whole thing was just fucking weird. And it really bothered me for a couple days. I felt really like kind of rejected and I think the last thing I said to him was therapy is going to be a blast tomorrow and he's like sorry for the emotional roller coaster damn right motherfucker you should be sorry you're telling me you want to fly me down to Florida and all this shit and then all of a sudden like I show you who I really am and you're like sorry you're not interested you're too intense <laughs> like I don't have time for that so like I don't know how this person found me is like the end of this video I don't know if this person found me through YouTube or or or, I, I don't know, I, I, tell me guys, is there another way that he could have stumbled across my profile and maybe I'm just being like really paranoid or something, but I just don't see how someone across the country, you can just come across them and like maybe that happens, but it's also weird to like friend that person and talk to them. I don't know. So that's my story. I'm convinced that I was getting catfished. I also left out the part that, like, I stalked the shit out of his profile. His phone number was listed on his profile, so I was, like, fucking, like, Googling that. I was, like, I was, like, I was real into catfish at this time, so I was, like, taking his profile picture and, like, putting it into Google, and it wasn't coming up with anything. But it did show that his phone number was his because it showed, like, James blank, um, and it showed that, like, he paid his bill or something. So I did some heavy stalking and, you know, I, I was able to assess that, like, I think it was a real person because, like, he had, like, 26 people ride on his wall for his birthday. So, like, I was convinced that I was being catfished for a long part of this, but I think it really was a real person. 
Or maybe, it, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Um, chalk it up to experience. But what I did learn, I'm not mad about the situation because I learned this one thing. That when it comes to, oh, because he, I learned that I need to be respected for my male and female parts of my identity when it comes to being in a romantic relationship. Because he said two really fantastic things to me. He said, I want you to be my boyfriend and girlfriend all rolled into one, which was really validating. But also, why are you saying that? Because you haven't even met me. And then I was talking about, like, we were talking about marriage, like, not to each other, but, like, you know, do you want to get married someday? And I was like, you know, I'm really conflicted. I don't know what I would wear to a wedding. Like, you know, I had visions of me wearing a dress, but, like, I slightly identify as male. And when I wear a tux, and he was like, wear a, <laughs> wear a dress to the, uh, to the wedding and a tux to the reception. And I just thought that was so funny. So, like, I did take away something really positive, and I learned that I do need both of my identities to be validated. I'm not going to just be someone's boyfriend. I'm not going to just be someone's girlfriend. I'm going to be both. And that was a really important lesson that I learned. And I'm not even going to say it in a fortunate way because, like, I'm, I don't fucking care. Like, I'm, I'm not scarred by this experience. So, yeah, I just wanted to share this because I think the whole situation is weird and I don't understand how he found me. So if you're watching this, James Blank, like, hey, bitch. <laughs> like, hit me up and tell me how you actually found me. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but anyway, all right, you guys, I hope you have a good day.